Today, I want to make an investment video about the first $100,000 you'll ever make in your life and why Charlie Munger, who is one of the biggest investors in the world, says it will be one of the hardest things that you will ever do in your life. I want to go deeper into the journey of the first $100,000 and then how it changes right after. Or maybe, you know, as you near it, it starts changing. So without further ado, the first thing, getting to your first $100,000. Usually when you're starting from nothing, like I it, it's going to be an entire journey just getting to your first thousand dollars, then first ten thousand dollars, and then first hundred thousand dollars. You'll notice that if you just go, you know, the, the usual road of uh, school, university, and then kind of getting into a job, it'll take you into your late 20s or 30s if you're in the Western world, or of course, if you're in the Asian world, it might be tougher, but it will be definitely not a compounding effect. You, you're going to have ceiling to your salary. It's not going to be able to grow right away. So you're going to start developing fundamental skills of wealth management, investing, you're going to start looking for other things to do with your money. And so as you go through the journey of your first hundred thousand dollars, you're learning basic skills. And that's why when lottery winners are getting their money in one go, they haven't learned the fundamentals that you tend to learn in your first hundred thousand dollars. Now, once you get to your first hundred thousand, thousand dollars which we will cover a little bit more in detail and ways that you can do it too you're going to notice that the change in mentality happens where you're actually going to be using your money to invest in the future. And so now your money starts working for you. And the reason why Charlie Munger, in my opinion, thinks that that's a tipping point to $100,000 is because the amount of money you'll start making from just passive investments that you've put into you know risky things like crypto or maybe just the S&P 500, these are types of compounding that you're probably not even going to be able to compete with over the long term because you might fall sick, you might have a, a cap in how much you can earn, whereas your money will keep compounding. And if you have more than $100,000 and let's say you're less than 30 years old, you're pretty much guaranteed to become a millionaire by the time you're a pensioner. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is you might become a millionaire by the time, you know, 50 years or something passes by or 40, 30 years. But inflation is also a thing. So you're pretty much hedging your money against inflation. So you will grow and you might become a millionaire. But obviously, the goal is that inflation kind of sticks under what you make. And then you will become a true millionaire where you can actually afford to do things that are fun instead of, you know, being able to buy bread in 50 years for a million bucks. So once we've discovered what the mindset shift is, the first $100,000 are going to be about building fundamental skills. And as I started building my business, I started noticing that every company has different departments and certain departments bring in more money than you might think. So the first department, obviously, that everybody knows about, but nobody talks about is legal. So legal doesn't actually bring a lot of money. It mostly defends you from, ta from people who want to take your money. So legal is probably going to be a thing you might learn down the line. Let's say you're after your hundred thousand dollars, you're starting to buy real estate. And so that's when you usually the, you know, when you're actually getting into this kind of stuff, you're starting to learn legal things. But again, these are things you're not going to have to learn in the beginning of your journey. And so you start already understanding like there are certain fundamental skills that you can see in every single business that you will need to learn as you progress throughout your journey. Another one is accountancy. Now, this one is the first one I started delegating. I hired an accountancy firm right out of the gate. I had a law background and I knew that I know enough to, to probably screw it up. So the first thing I would have to delegate is accountancy. Now, accountants can find you money if you're already making money. So let's say that you're really good at sales and you're making money. An accountant's going to keep you on track and it's going to find specific like legal loopholes that you can use to make even more money. And so these type of fundamental skills are necessary, but as you can hear, they're kind of like an extra to the fact that you have to do the next apartment, which is sales. 
Sales is going to be the number one skill that you're going to have to learn on your journey towards the $100,000. If you want to have $100,000 a year salary, you're going to have to be able to sell yourself. You're going to have to be able to brand yourself, which I guess is kind of a subsection of sales, just more to the general world. So you're going to need to know how to create a CV, how to make a website, how to make a, you know, a simple introduction video or a script for that, and then apply yourself to jobs. And once you're in that job, you need to be able to kind of play the politics and, and get a salary raise every single year or work really hard, get the right connections. This is pretty much everything uh, sales and negotiations. So these are very, very important skills that you're going to have to continue with as you go on your journey. And so you're starting to notice now you have the basic skills of sales, you have uh, an, a good accountant, maybe just somebody you're doing your own taxes and then you ask once a year uh, an accountant to look over it to give you maybe tips. So now you're maximizing your money. So what is next? Well, now we start thinking marketing. Marketing is another department that's very common, right? Okay, so now you have marketing, you have some sales, an accountant's making sure you're doing everything legal and getting all the legal loopholes so you're maximizing your profits. But now you're in a job, maybe you're making, let's say $60,000 a year and you're starting to grow. Maybe you're in your thirties now and, and you kind of want to do more with your money. So you don't have enough money yet to start an investment fund like many big corporates have, but you do want to do something. You want to scale your money, right? You don't have enough yet to maybe start going crazy in crypto and stuff like that. So what do you do? Well, in a company, you do marketing, which is pretty much you scale what you have in sales. And so if your sales are pretty rough and you start scaling with marketing, then the whole funnel will go bad. You'll start having issues on your web pages. If you have online sales, your customer support's going to falter. So, so sales is definitely something you need to figure out first. But in the context of a normal job, what sales actually, what marketing would actually mean is that now you take your $60,000 a year salary or something like that, and you start looking at how can I scale this? And this is usually when people start looking into real estate investing, uh, or they start looking into uh, doing a side hustle with their job that maybe they can, let's say they're doing something in marketing, so they create a small ebook that they put online and suddenly they have like this little side hustle that brings them an extra $10,000, $20,000. And if they're doing it really well, maybe they start doing YouTube, so they start branding themselves properly marketing. And maybe YouTube at one point starts giving them the equivalent of their salary so now marketing is starting to really kick sales ass and so you start considering maybe you should do this thing full time. So I built a tech business and I can advise you to have multiple marketing funnels but you build marketing funnels one at a time and you use the Pareto principle which is a basic economical principle that everybody knows with the 80-20 rule. You look at where you're making the most amount of money let's say it's YouTube or maybe you wrote an ebook and people are buying that ebook and so you start investing in doing it more. You make more ebooks, you make more YouTube videos, you make more courses, whatever you do, just do that thing that people like uh, seeing from you. That's the basic things of, you know, when you launch a Facebook ad campaign, you have like five ads that you launch initially, and then you start like peeling off the ones that are bad and then doing different iterations, and you scale the ones that go crazy. And so same thing here, you have your job, and then you come back, and then you do these little other products and ads that can scale your income. And so we're, this video is getting pretty long, but I just wanted to give you an insight because it's a short video that you have to look at existing companies. And if you want to scale your income and you want to get to that $100,000, you need to start working at every single department that you have within yourself. And as you scale and you start working on these departments, you're going to start noticing that you're going to get closer to that $100,000. Because at the end of the day, let's say you're making $20,000 a year, right? If you work on all these skills that I just mentioned, you might get it a little bit more up. So you'll be able to save a little bit more. You'll have, let's say 5,000, because you're living on $20,000 a year, because that's your job. So you don't have a lot, but let's say you make an extra $5,000 a year, which is quite an increase. It's 25% increase every year. And you put $5,000 aside, $5,000 aside, but you're also building skills. These skills become more valuable. Suddenly 5,000 becomes 6,000. And this is where most people tend to go wrong. I built 
my business over a span, like it's now a decade. So you don't have to make money in the first two years. If you're struggling, like I was struggling in the beginning, the first four to five years were brutal, but the next five years started becoming much easier. So as you make $5,000 a year, and suddenly this becomes $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, except it's never a linear growth, it's definitely an exponential growth. After 10 years, pretty much when you're gonna be where I'm at today, you're going to have more than $100,000 because you've been saving all of that up. Let's say you get in year three to $10,000 extra, right? So now you, in the next 10 years, you'll be saving $100,000. If, of course, you keep your lifestyle inflation in check, so you pretty much only keep spending what you had at $20,000 income, because now all the extras are just money that you're learning how to invest, how to grow your skills, how to make more money. And so let's say you start that journey at 20 years old, right? $20,000 salary, that's usually entry level jobs, depending on if you're in the tech sector, I'm from the tech sector, of course. And so 10 years later, when you're 30, you're going to have a quite a lot of money in your savings account. Uh, the last thing that I want to close off, though, as we move on to after $100,000, you start now becoming, let's say, for a normal person, you kind of like becoming this small little business that you're running yourself. Now, I work a lot with corporates, and one of the things that they have is investment funds because they have a lot of liquidity. Now, liquidity, which means just have they have a lot of money on their savings account, uh, so they need to put that somewhere to work for them. And a lot of these corporates invest in startups, new technologies, rising technologies, all that stuff. And so within kind of the normal world, what that means is for, for people like us, is you go on stock exchanges and you invest in rising technologies, new innovations, new hyping companies, that kind of stuff. And so as you progress, I would say after your first forty or fifty thousand dollars in savings, you're gonna start looking at all these things like stocks, crypto, real estate, and everything. And so between 50 and $100,000, you're gonna make a ton of mistakes. And afterwards, you're gonna start learning that department as well. And now after $100,000, if you have that for a couple of years, it's gonna be much easier to get to a million. But I can tell you though, that one of the things that I started focusing on is that is things kind of like passive income. So not only just growing through stocks and crypto and everything, but investing in startups. Again, I come from the tech sector and after a decade of experience, it was kind of interesting for me to just be involved at the beginning of these startups. You know, they don't need a lot of capital so you can invest in it and it's something that I understand and have more control over. So as you help them, suddenly this can grow twice, three times or more, it can maybe beat the S&P 500. It's very risky, of course, but again, one of the things that is very kind of cliche advice is invest in things that you understand. I have a decade of experience in this sector, so I'm investing in this sector, but maybe you have a kind of interest in other sectors like gaming, or you have interest in art or something like that, and then you take your money and you invest in that. So there's a ton of advice here, but what I wanted to say is kind of like my opinion on what everybody says, what Charlie Munger said with $100,000, how it changes after $100,000. Uh, technically nothing changes, it's just that $200,000, you're, you're building certain skills. And after $100,000, you're making those, you're scaling those skills. It's kind of like a startup. In the beginning, you're building every department and then you're scaling every department. It requires different types of skills and the problems are definitely much bigger once you get to the scaling phase. So with that being said, I would leave this video and hope you enjoyed it.